It's four slides. And this is a device called a magnetoencephalograph. You've heard of electroencephalographs where you put wires on and you read brain action? Well, the magnetoencephalograph reads the action of the brain but not touching the head. There's a probe above that man's head on the right-hand side, and that probe is called a squid, a super quantum induction device. What does it do? It reads magnetic fields. And what does it reveal? That as you're doing neurological processing, your thoughts are not contained in your head. That your brain waves actually emanate and transmit from your head. Just like atoms and molecules, you're always emitting and absorbing energy. And your thoughts are energy that you send out. It's not mystical or anything like that. It's pretty physical. It's based on a simple rule of physics. It says this, when a current is running through a wire, that if you take your right hand, it's called the rule of the right hand thumb. And it goes like this. If I have the wire and the current is running this way and I take my right hand with my thumb pointing in the direction of the flow and wrap it around the wire, my fingers describe the orientation of a magnetic field around that wire. Nerves are wires. When nerve action goes through the nerves, a magnetic field shown in that orange-yellow circle leaves the head and comes back in again. So basically, your thoughts are broadcast. And now here's the other interesting thing. Now we hook it to this next one, and then all of a sudden you'll see the pertinence of this whole ththing. It's like this. The Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox in the brain, the transferred potential. Let me explain the EPR in just a moment. And it goes like this. That Particles in fundamental physics come in spins, and they come in pairs, one spinning to the left, one spinning to the right. And it says if you change the spin of one, the other one will instantaneously change its spin to complement it. So the fact is, the one, if I'm spinning left and I'm spinning right, if I take the right one and start spinning it left, then the left one will start spinning right, because they're complementary. Well, the point about it is this. If I move the particles apart and do it here and change them, they'll still change. And if I move them further apart, they still change. It turns out that you can actually take two particles and move them to each side of the universe, change one particle, and the other one will instantly change. It's called action at a distance, entanglement. And the issue about this paper is it says it's not just a quantum effect. They take two people. They get them to interact with each other. Two people who have never met each other. They get them a chance to hang out, sit down, talk, interact, so they can sort of like bond a little bit. Then they take one of these guys and put them 50 feet away over there in a cage, a wire cage to protect from electromagnetic fields. And they take the other guy and put him in here in a cage, 50, you know, it's 50 feet between the two guys. And they take this guy and flash a light in his eye, which causes what is called an evoked potential. The brain starts to fire with the light flashing. And it turns out, when they get this guy with their shining the light in his eye to, to, to get an evoked potential, simultaneously the other one down there gets the same evoked potential. The point is that the brains are interconnected, that the more bonding that goes on between people, the more interconnected they are. And people who are out here who know have been coupled long enough know frequently that one could have a thought and the other person could respond to it even before you even talked about it. And the reason is this. We are connected by the energy between us. Relevance, the power of prayer. Prayer can be sent to other people and influence their biology that we can influence health by our belief systems affecting the others around us as well. But that's always wonderful. We always talk about the beautiful nature of the power of prayer. What about the power of hate? The power of hate works the same way. If I hate somebody, I'm connected to them. I can't hate somebody I'm not connected to because I don't know them. So I can hate somebody I'm connected to. But the problem is this. Like the power of prayer, unfortunately, instead of sending good news, I start sending bad news. Well, the response is going to also work itself back. Voodoo is sending bad news, the opposite of prayer, sending ill health down this line. What's the relevance? All of us are interconnected. All of our thoughts are not just in our head. Our thoughts are in the field, and they specifically bind to people that we're associated with. How many of you have frequently said, you know, I was just talking about Bob. I haven't seen Bob in 25 years. Oh, the phone's ringing. Hey, Bob, I was just talking about you. All of us have had experiences like that, and the significance is this. We're all interconnected. Your thoughts are always being connected. And in fact, it's been recently found that, the, remember those antennas on the surface of the cell? They receive identity. And it's been interesting because people that have received, like, heart and lungs from people who have died receive some of the characteristics along with the heart and lungs. 
They used to say, well, it's in the cell memory, and the idea is, look, I'm a cellular biologist, I want to tell you, they don't have neurons and brains like that. There's no way a cell can have memory. How is the memory brought about? Because the identity of the person was coming through the antennas, that we are not even in our bodies, that we have antennas on the surface that distinguish each one of us. They're called self-receptors, self-receptors, receivers of self. What does this mean? I try to take my cells and put it in your body, and your immune system says, hey, these are not my cells, get rid of it. So they're reading identity. And I said, well, where's the identity come from? It comes from these antennas. So the point is this. If I take your cells and cut off the identity re antennas, the self receptors, your cells are generic. They have no identity. I can take your cells and put it into another human. They won't be rejected. I could put it into a mouse. It won't be rejected. I could even take your cells and put them into a chicken. And they'll work without being rejected because they don't have the identity. So where's the identity? It comes in through the antennas. What does that mean? You're not inside the body in the first place. You're in the environment. And when you transplant the organs of a dead person into a live person, these people still have the antennas linked to that identity. So that person is now downplaying through these lungs and hearts or whatever else they are. And now an interesting new one I just read this week. It's really exciting. When a mother is pregnant and the fetus is implanting itself, fetal cells migrate through the mother's system we used to think that these cells would disappear at birth. They would be lost from the system. Now we recognize they're not. That the mother and her child are connected because they both, the, the mother has the cells of the child in it that tune in to the child's identity. So the mother can tell when something goes wrong with her child, even if they're not connected, because they're on the same wavelength. The relevance of all this is what it hit me, the first thing it hit me, I was non-spiritual. I was an allopathic research medical scientist. I wasn't looking for spirituality. All I was looking at is how does the cell control itself. I saw the membrane and understood that, and then I saw the recognition of the self receptors. And I said to myself, oh, my God, I'm not inside of here. I'm playing in the environment. Why? If I cut off the receptors, I don't have identity anymore. And the bottom line is this. If you're receiving an identity from the environment, and what happens if it's like a television set with an antenna on it, but the antenna is tuned to an identity? Here's the issue. You're watching a television show. The television picture tube breaks. What do we say about the TV? It's what? It's dead. Did the broadcast stop? Yes or no? No. How do you know? You can get another TV, put the antenna on it, turn it on, and tune it to that station, and boom, you're back on the air. Point is this. I could take your cell receptors off of your cell and put it onto another cell. I could take my cell cut off my self receptors, take your self receptors, stick it on my cell, and put my, that cell into your body, it's yourself. It's, it's not me anymore, it's you. And the point about it is, all of a sudden you start to recognize this, and I said, oh my God, if I'm out there in the environment, then what happens if I kill the cell? It doesn't change me in the environment, I'm still out there. And all of a sudden, I cough. First time in my life, the reality of a spiritual identity, and why this is relevant, it's because the spirit persists whether the body is here or not. And that's what we're recognizing from people who are receiving these large organ transplants, that they're picking up the identity because the cells are still receiving from the self receptors. So there's more to us than this physical body. That biology is on the verge of not only showing us that evolution and creation were simultaneous, but identity exists outside of the body. And that's what allows us to communicate through the atmosphere. And the relevance, ultimately, of that communication simply comes down to this conclusion. Beliefs are created in the brain. The beliefs adjust the body to match the belief. The brain waves are transmitted into the environment so that beliefs are transmitted into the environment and impact those people that we are closest to. The closer you are to somebody, the more impact your belief will have on them. So the relevance is then healing through prayer is understandable. Hurting through bad intentions is also understandable. So the reality is, it's a belief system. It's not a gene system, it's a belief system. What's the relevance of that? You can change beliefs virtually instantaneously. Which is larger, the north or the south? <laughs> south. You see, how long does it take to change a belief? Not a long time. Relevance, your belief is running your life. If you change your beliefs, you can alter your life. If it's not running the way you want it, change your beliefs, and you'll start to see you will bring things into your life. 
And with that understanding, I, I'd like to close with this understanding for you. You are more powerful than anyone has ever given you credit for. We have lost our power by assigning it to the genes. But I want you to understand, as you've seen tonight, the genes cannot activate themselves. They're responding to the environment, which includes not just the other signals, but the identity of who you are. You carry this into your body when you come here. And the idea about it is this is your life. And the bottom line is this. You can change your life as fast as you can change your beliefs. And your beliefs can be changed almost instantly. And the reality is you are not a victim unless you're just a victim of your belief. And you can change belief. And therefore, when you get up from this, this room and you walk away, recognize as you're walking, you know those thoughts that keep going through your head and all that? Analyze them. Think about them. Why? Because those are shaping your future. Why? Those are the thoughts that are leaving your head and are like tuning forks. They l resonate with things out in your environment. Tuning fork. It's, your brain is a tuning fork. What does that mean? Well, what happens to the tuning fork when it, it causes the goblet to, remove, to start moving, right? So your brain creating events in your life. And all of a sudden, you have to recognize, well, what are those beliefs as you're walking down the street? As psychologists and psychiatrists inform us, approximately 70% of our beliefs are negative and redundant. If we have negative and redundant beliefs and we're having a tuning fork that is not bringing us good news. It's only going to cause anything to shake that's negative out there in the field. Things that would not, that, you know, everything is sort of like sitting still, but when the tuning fork starts to vibrate, it will cause whatever resonates with it to vibrate as well. So I have a, let's say, 50 people out here, and there are 49 good people and one bad guy. And I start putting out a vibration of fear of the bad guy, fear of the bad guy. So what am I? I'm a tuning fork. Which, which of the people out there are going to vibrate with me? The bad guy. And all of a sudden, the bad guy will be attracted to me. We bring into our lives things because we're not watching that. This is the secret of life. Watch your thoughts because you can create new ones. I know this. I've done it. And it works. And the caring center here in town is a great resource to get into recognizing the beliefs and the energy in your environment, how you can alter them because it's a darn sight more healthy and safe than going through a lot of conventional medical practices to try to do the same. So I leave you with this. You are powerful beyond anything you've ever imagined. But then you have to recognize responsibility. And I used to end, I used to end by saying, if you understand everything I just said, then you understand this. You are personally responsible for everything in your life. Well, I used to end that way, and people got so mad at me all the time that I thought, this is not a good ending at all. And in fact, what happened was some woman got so upset she brought her husband in because she was just could not fathom the idea that she was involved in the unfoldment of her life. So we talked about it, and I said, okay, let's, how about this as a conclusion? So this is the new conclusion. You ready? You are personally responsible for everything in your life once you become aware that you are personally responsible for everything in your life. Thank you very much. Thank you.